गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन टुडे वी आर मीटिंग अगैन फॉर योर अनदर पोइट्री दैट इज एन एलिमेंट्री स्कूल इन इस्लाम बेसिकली दिस पोइट्री हैज बिन रिटन बाय स्टीफन स्पेंजर द पोम टच इज अपॉन द थीम्स ऑफ सोशल इनजस्टिस एंड क्लास इन इक्वालिटीज दैट इज वेरी मच प्रवलेंट इन अ सोसाइटी इट क्वेश्चन द वैल्यू ऑफ एजुकेशन इन इस्लाम it exposes the widespread neglect of these children who are uncared for like rootless weeds it gives the readers a description of malnourished children with the pale faces stunted growth and twisted bones these themes should be kept in mind but the poem does not dwell upon the pessimism basically it highlights the roles of educators and the more privileged class in society to liberate the children and infuse them with human creativity Proceeding to next slide, let's talk about the poet. The poet of this poetry is Stephen Spencer, who is an English poet and an essayist who took an active part in politics. So basically, through this poem, he tried to convey a very powerful message related to the plight of the children, and he has also highlighted the themes of social injustice and inequalities as being already described in the first slide. The poet uses vivid images and appropriate expression to reflect the difficulties faced by the underprivileged children that is prevalent in the world of ours. In the third slide you can see the two pictures in one picture you can find that the you know these children from some slum areas what they have to do actually and in the second picture you can see the poverty that is being reflected from the child's face. So in the fourth slide I will be first of all reading the poetry for you the first stanza of the poetry and then I will be explaining the same so it says that the far far from gusty waves underline this phrase gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn round their paler the tall girl with her weighed down head the paper seeming boy with rats eyes the stunted unlucky hair of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease is lessened from his chest at the back of a dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this so first of all you need to keep in mind three things over here first all the phrases should be underlined second just underline the number of children like there we find a uh, you know a tall girl who you know is uh, burdened with poverty uh, and we also find a paper seeming boy a very thin and lean boy third we also found a boy you know whose bones are twisted and he was suffering from some disease and in the last we found a boy who has certain dreams in his mind so let's describe this stanza the poet says like rootless weeds he is using the simile over here here and is comparing the rootless weeds with the children's faces he says rootless is without a foundation of values weeds being unwanted like these children have no values and they are not wanted in this materialistic world so the children are unwanted and without any bindings their hair is smeared all over their pale faces description of the children in the classroom now let's talk about them a tall girl probably could be the older for the class in which she is studying her head is hung low due to the burden of poverty paper seeming boy again underline this it is a metaphor to describe the boy that is his skin is as thin and white as paper that's i another metaphor metaphor to uh, indicate the expression of his eyes as being greedy another boy has deformed body and which probably he had inherited from his father he cannot stand and is reciting the lesson from his seat his father has passed on it, his disease to his son as inheritance he has passed this disease not some you know uh, wealth to the son the classroom is dark poorly lit another boy is not noticeable as he is at the back of the room but this unnoted boy has certain dreams in his you know uh, mind it is you know the boy's eyes are bright as if they are dreaming of escaping out into the open and playing with squirrels in trees houses in tree houses sorry rather than being in a small dim room there 
is an antithesis between the openness of the tree room and the dim closed classroom. So now I will be proceeding to the second stanza of the poetry which reads as on sore cream walls donations. Shakespeare heads cloudless at dawn civilized tone riding all cities. Belge Florida Rilis Valley. Open handed map awarding the world its world. And yet for these children these windows not this map their world. Where all their futures painted with a fog. A narrow street, uh, street sealed in with a lead sky. Far, far from river capes and stars of words. So the explanation goes like this. Here in the walls of the classroom are being described, which are considered very dirty and yellow in color like sour cream. Use of sour cream walls is a simile. So you need to underline this. Description of posters were there, wherein it, they, all the posters were put up on the walls of the classroom. They are probably donated to the school. One of them has a picture of Shakespeare. His head in the picture is bald, looks like the rising sun. Education is said to be similar to the rising sun as it spreads light in all lives just as the sun does. He is considered to be the symbol of culture, education, intelligence all over the world. The next poster is of Tyrellis Valley, full of churches and flowers which symbolizes beautiful creation of nature. Another one is of map of the world. Map is a metaphor used to signify something which is generously sharing its knowledge. But to these children, the world is not the one shown in these pictures. But it is the one they see out of the classroom window. They are trapped there. Their future is dim and totally hopeless. A narrow street is a metaphor for their future which is limited. Sealed with the lead sky again a metaphor which indicates sealed with a grey color sky means dull future or dark future. The children have a dark future as their option in life are limited and are covered with dismay. Dismay means sadness. Far far is a repetition which means very far away, means they are very far from a civilized society. These children are very far from the seaside and the stars means as the stars shine in the dark sky, similarly the light of knowledge could brighten these children's future, but they are far from it. Far, far repetition to lay stress on the distance that is very far. Gusty waves suddenly rush of strong wind is full of, is full of energy and vigor. These faces of the children are very far from being energetic as they should be. Next slide, it reads the third stanza of the poetry which goes like that. Surely Shakespeare is wicked. The map is a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. For lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes, from fog to endless night, on their slag heap, these children wear skin peeped to the by bones and spectacles and spectacles of steel rimmed glass with mended glass like a bottle uh, bits on stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum. So blot their maps with slums as big as doom. So the explanation goes like this. In the third stanza, the poet is stressing about the pictures on the wall which have no meaning for the children. The children's upbringing is um, such that they are looking for bad qualities in everyone. So to them, even Shakespeare is wicked and bad. There is no benefit to put his picture in the room. The pictures of maps, ships, sun indicate travel, love and acceptance. Comprehending these pictures is beyond their abilities. Instead. The desire for love and acceptance will force them to do crimes like stealing. Crown's holes is a metaphor to indicate their small homes which are filled to capacity. Means they are living in a very congested room. They have adapted themselves to live in these spaces. From fog, alliteration is used. Fog is a metaphor used for day. Endless night is a metaphor to indicate a never-ending torture. The children are so skinny that their clothes are like a skin and their skeleton is visible through them. This is due to the lack of nutrition, means the children are malnourished. They have worn looking glasses made of steel which are cheap, heavy and uncomfortable. This signifies their outlook on life is also hardened with their life's ruthlessness. Like bottle bits on stones is a simile to describe the lenses in their spectacles which have been repaired. 
Similarly, their dreams have also been broken by the harsh reality of their lives. All of their time and space are foggy. Islam is a metaphor to show that their life is dark, dirty and without hope. Their chances of escaping have been further reduced by building bigger slums. The schools and the government making these slums is the cause for these children or the people to live in them. The education system is such that it is forcing them to live in these slums and not coming out of them. So let's proceed to the last stanza of the poetry which reads as Unless governor, inspector and visitor, this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs, breaking or breaking open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into the books, the white, the green leaves, open history, their language whose language is the sun. So in this stanza, the poet is trying to convey to the government and the public to make these maps on the walls, the children's vision, to make it their aspiration and an achievable reality for them. The ch classroom windows which have restricted their opportunities have been broken open. Break or break open is repetition and alteration, shows urgency to help them escape and achieve their dreams. They should be taken to green fields rather than the dim slums. Azure is deep blue sky used as antithesis to the foggy lead sky where they live. The sunny warm sand of the beaches and the bright blue sky will instill a hunger in their minds for knowledge and they will then absorb all of it. White and green leaves again a metaphor. White implies the pages of the book and green leaves signify the clean environment that is prosperity. Economical empowerment will come to these children through, you know, steady through the academics, but in a civilized school. Powerful last line, which means the people who make history are the ones who speak, think, feel and enjoy the sun. All right. So concluding the poetry, I just want you to convey certain things. You know, the poet is urging the people, the civilized society to help them out so that they can also become an asset to our uh, country. Not only this, once you are done with the poetry, you need to keep in mind the poetic devices and mostly metaphor is being highlighted over here. Once you are done with it, just let me know about your doubts so that I can clarify it. Thank you.